happening. And as I walked out the door, you probably don't remember this, because a lot of people walked in and you said, no, I'm not playing the record. And then when you did, they all remembered. And you had to move on to the next guy in the next record. But I'm telling you the story for the first time. I walk out and I say to Steve, as we're walking out of CKLW, we all know that that station, without it, we don't have a hit. Understand that period of time. Every station in America waited for her to make her decision. This is God's truth. Every station would say, if CKLW goes on it, we'll go on it. So you pray. I'm walking out the door and she goes, Tony! Yes? <laughs> she says, if the next record is in the ballpark at all, I give you my word. If it sounds like a top 40 hit, I'm going on it. Because you made a great record here. So the failure of your lady opened the door because the next record was tying the yellow ribbon around the old, old track. So now, I get a call from Kenny Boutiste, the young man she's talking about, he goes, you better sit down. She went on yellow ribbon and the calls came in. I think you have a number one record. Little did I know that not only did she hand me my number one record, but that song became the signature song for a television show. That song has become a homecoming for many of our troops, both Canadian and American. I jumped on that record. Uh, my grandmother um, read the Reader's Digest all the time. And I, not every weekend, but every once in a while when I went down there, I'd pick up the Reader's Digest and go through it. And there was a story about this GI that was in the Army. And he said, uh, the family shipped him off and they were all upset and everything else, but they said if they knew that if he could come home safe, that they would tie yellow ribbons on the old oak tree out in their front yard. This is a true story. So that's where tie a yellow ribbon came from. But you see, that's the kind of thing. She understood that there was a heart in the song. So you have to understand, when I, when I think about Rosalie Trombley, and I see the most eclectic kind of performance, think about it, from Tony Orlando and Dawn to Alice Cooper. <laughs> That's one big fat ear. <laughs> to go, that's a stretch. And she would do this time and time again. I'm gonna tell you right now, there'd be no Motown. Not the Motown we all know without her. <laughs> and I've been waiting over 30 some odd years, 38 years, to thank you and to think God has provided me the moment in front of an audience that loves you here in Windsor. My first time in Windsor was 50 years ago. I'm celebrating my 50th anniversary in Shulpitz this week. The next thing I remember about you is we changed our name. If you remember, Yellow Ribbon was under the name Dawn. It wasn't Tony Orlando and Dawn yet. So we get the television show. So Kenny has been calling you to tell me the news about the TV show. So what's happened to Tony since? Because of you, I worked for seven presidents. Because of you, I worked for the Queen of England. Because of you, an eighth grader who never saw high school has received an honorary diploma and a doctorate. Because of you, because of you, and your caring, not, after, not only when you play the record, but after you play the record. You stay in touch with people, you show your heart for people. When I worked the casino next door, you were there. You, I got a call from Bobby, who was heading entertainment then. He says, there's a lady here that works in this hotel. She works somewhere, I don't know, maybe, in, maybe she hangs up the coats. <laughs> 
I don't know what she does. She calls and she says she knows you, but a lot of people do that. Her name is Rosalie Trombley. I said, what? <laughs> you have who? She's working where? I don't know, she's working with the rollers, and she's, I don't know what she's getting. She works with the slot machine, something. Something? I said, every act you got coming into this building owes her their livelihood. You remember that day when we came down and I said, what are you doing here? For God's sake, she says, I'm working. And I'm having a good time. Because don't forget, she worked with some of the hard, forgive my name, some of the hard asses you ever met in your life. Some of the toughest dudes. So they were so anti-female, they couldn't figure out how this woman had so much power. And she always looked them with that smile, and she always looked them in the eye and said, I play it. If it has it. I'm an independent woman. I have an opinion, and it's in my music. We here at CKLW take pride in that. That's what you're about. It's an honor to be here. Rosie, 